Okay, let's look at question two. So question two, um, we're going to be working with annexures, so you must make sure you have those on hand. But there's also a lot of reading here and a lot of sort of detail. So it's important to just go about this quite slowly because it's very easy to lose marks just because you haven't understood a question. So John and five other family members, so it's going to be six of them in total, decided to participate in the Bavianskloof Leopard Trail Run. They decided to camp at the Bavianskloof Eitzbahn camping site. Annex to A, okay, so as soon as you see that, go okay, get Annex to A. Mine's in black and white. I think yours is in colour, but here it is. Shows an aerial view of Bavianskloof Eitzbahn with campsites and the number of campers allowed. Some campsites have one hut and others have more than one hut, labelled A, B and C. So just look here. Okay, so campsite one only has one hut. But campsite two has two hats. Do you see there? A and B. That's what it means by what it, that last sentence there, labeled A, B, and C. Use annex A and the information above to answer the questions that follow. So it says explain what is meant by aerial view. Okay, so aerial view, many ways you can explain this. I think the best way to explain it is just a top view, right? You can say top view or bird's eye view. That's also something that um, I think it's, I think you spell it like that, bird's eye view. Just basically saying, like, you're viewing it from the top, right? That's basically what you say. Let's move on to the next question. So, calculate the maximum number um, of campers that can be accommodated at the Baby and Sloof Eitzbone camping site. Um, so, what we need to do is we need to look here. So, basically, what we need to do is we need to add all of these up, okay? Because, obviously... If all of these were occupied to their maximum capacity, then that would be the maximum number of campers, right? So we add all of these up. But just look here, it says 46, 46. So the maximum you would have there is 6 for each, right? Because it's saying it can accommodate anything between 4 and 6. Okay. So just note that when you're adding up. So because it's three marks, you need to show a little bit of... Um, working out you can't just give a number so what you need to do 2.1.2 you need to literally just write out and i'm going to write it out here you can check with me if i'm doing anything wrong but 6 plus 15 plus 4 plus 15 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 15 plus 8 plus 10 plus 6 plus 6 plus 20 you can just pop that all into your calculator. And if you pop it into your calculator, just be careful to pop it in correctly. It's going to be 118 campers. Okay. It's not too difficult. That was sort of a more a um, exercise in accuracy than anything else. So then it says determine the general direction of the dam from campsite left. Okay. So let's just, this is where you want to cal um, calculate its highlighters. <laughs> So I'm here, okay, and the dam is here, okay. So what's also interesting to note is that north is situated up like this, okay. So that's north, let's just draw this, so that's, let's make sure you can see, north, never eat silk worms, that's always how I remember it, north, east, south, west. Okay, so the question said, determine the generation of the dam from campsite 8, so I'm standing here, and I'm looking at campsite 8, so I'm going to be over there. So it's kind of like this over here. So it's going to be southwest. So no, remember always, if you're in between two directions, you're always going to say um, the either south or north first, and then the second one. So it's not west-south, it's southwest. Okay, that's just the convention. So we're just going to say southwest. You can just write it like this, right? Because um, that's commonly accepted, but if you want to write it out, that's also okay. Um, but I'm just giving you options. Then 2.1.4, the description below is found on their website. This campsite is situated near the dam and can be accommodated, can accommodate a maximum of 19 campers. Write down which campsite is being described. Um, write down only the number of the campsite. Okay, so we know the dams here. So it's either going to be 1, 2, or 9. So 1 only has 6, so it can't be that one. 2... If we add that together, that gives me 19. So that's looking promising. And let's look at 9. 9 can do 20. So that's too many campers. So we know that our answer has to be 2. You can literally just write 2. Because it just said write down the number. So you don't have to do more than that. Okay. So that was just an interpretive question. 
2.1.5, calculate as a percentage, that's very important, because the probability questions they can ask you in a fraction, in a decimal, in a percentage, you must always read the question carefully. The probability of John and his family randomly selecting a hut that can exactly accommodate the whole family. Remember the whole family we mentioned up here is six people. So basically when it says exactly, it's saying can six people fit in there exactly? No more, no less. So let's get our little trusty highlighter again. So we can see campsite one can do that. Campsite seven can do that and campsite eight can do that. So there's three ways we can get what we want. Okay, remember the whole thing with probabilities, the numerator is always, or the top number, is how many ways can I get what I want? So there's three ways I can get what I want. But then what do we do as our denominator? Okay, so our denominator says, calculate as percentage of the probability of John and his family randomly selecting a hut, right? So it's, we have to count now the number of huts, not the number of campsites, the number of huts. So the number of campsites is nine, but that's not our denominator, our bottom number, because we need huts. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 huts, okay? So just be careful because students, when they don't read correctly, then end up getting things wrong. But I want it as a percentage, so we have to times it by 100. Pop it into my calculator. Okay, do that, and that is my answer. Okay, now you could be saying, well, why did you round it off to 0, 0,8? Well, generally speaking, you round off to two decimal places. When I'm wanting to get two decimal places, I look at the third one. If the third one is five or above, I round up, and that's why it's that answer. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next question doing well here okay this is the last question for this video but it's got a couple of sub questions so let's just make sure we understand the layout plan below shows the ablution facilities so toilets and showers in the middle of campsite three four five and six the actual length of the ablution facility is eight comma two meters so in reality right obviously it's not eight comma two meters on this page but in reality then it says use the information above to answer the questions that follow write down the total number of showers okay so showers of these little guys looks like a light bulb but it's the shower head one two three four five six seven eight nine i don't see any other ones these are toilets those are benches that's a door none so you can just say none be careful with these questions to just label a b hey because remember these are sub questions to 2.1.6 okay determine rounded to the nearest whole number the scale of the plan, okay? So we need a little ruler, okay? And we're going to see. So here I'm getting eight comma two. Now in the memo, it says nine, okay? Um, you can either do millimeters, centimeters. I'm looking specifically at centimeters. So you could say 82 millimeters or 8,2 centimeters. But in the memo, it says 90 millimeters or 9 centimeters. So I, I think when I printed this out, it was the wrong scale. So let's just assume that I got what was in the memo. If you're like, oh, but Margie, what if, um, you know, I'm not getting close to that or whatever it is, um, you generally are given a bit of leeway on either side of 9, so anywhere from 8,7 to 9,3, so don't stress about it. But let's just assume that what was in the memo was correct. So we're going to say 9 centimeters on the map is 8,2 meters in reality. Okay, but now we have different measurements here, so that's not going to go well. So let's put them both into centimeters. What do we do to go from meters into centimeters? We times by 100. So it's going to be like that. Okay. Mm, did I do it right? Many times times by 100. I think I'm doing something wrong here. Mm, too many zeros. My bad. Okay. Times by 100. See, sometimes it's good to just use your calculator. But we want to make the side 1, right? That's kind of the aim. So I'm going to drop my... Um, uh, units now because they're both in the same unit right so we're happy with that so divide by nine what i do to the one side i have to do to the other side 
Okay, and that gives me 91,11111. Okay, so that's um, my scale. But it did say here specifically, um, determine rounded to the nearest whole number. So this is not a whole number, right? Um, and because it's quite low, the decimals are 111, the way we're going to round it is going to be like this. Okay, so that is our answer there. Be careful to measure correctly. Even if your measurement's wrong, you can still get marks for converting, right? So don't like get too stressed about that. Let's do the last question for this video. Give one suitable reason why benches are found in the ablution facility. Now, I mean, benches are for sitting, right? <laughs> Pretty obvious. So I'm just going to say um, to allow people to sit when waiting for a shower or toilet, right? It's pretty standard. You could also say people can put their stuff in it because they don't want to put their stuff on the floor. Lots of different options, but that's that. Let's move on to the second half of question two.